All right, folks, as you can hear, uh, still a, a bumpy road ahead. It looks like, uh, you know, really this market in general has been like a game of whack-a-mole, right? You see one index up, then it gets whacked, and another one pops up, then it gets whacked, and sometimes all three are getting whacked. Now, normally the day after the Fed wraps up one of these FOMC meetings, uh, you know, and everyone's had a time to assess, everyone got a good, night rest, a good night's rest, the street comes in and, you know, and they kind of have – uh, a consensus of what they think is happening. But right now, I feel like there's more confusion than there was yesterday. So let's bring in from Bianco Research, uh, their president, Jim Bianco. Jim, see, personally, I came away thinking the Fed missed a chance to be very aggressive. Just put it out there. But a lot of folks are saying, no, that they do see a 50 basis point hike in March. And as we both know, uh, and you pointed it out first, consensus now is five rate hikes for, for this year. Your, your thoughts? Yeah, I think 50 is a little aggressive for March, but that doesn't mean that they can't go 25 basis points in March, May, and June. And by the middle of the year, they'll, they will have lifted interest rates three quarters of a percent. I think really what's happening here is, Charles, let's be honest here. Wall Street is like a bunch of petulant children. They think they're the most important people in the world. And so, therefore, the Fed would never do anything that would upset them. But what they're learning is there's somebody more important than them, and that's inflation. And because we haven't had it for 40 years, they're not used to it. And they're now starting to come to the realization that they're second, they're second to dealing with inflation first, which is why they're having such a hard time understanding why the Fed would become so aggressive. Now, I did see a, a tweet from you yesterday explaining how bond yields going down would reflect a hawkish Fed. Uh, immediately after the FOMC, uh, the 10-year the spiked, uh, and it's been all over the board today. So is the bond market also as confused as everyone else? Yeah, I think it is. And I think that there is this, it's coming to this understanding that, but the Fed's going to raise rates, is the risk that they're going to raise rates too much and break something? And the answer is yes, that's a real, real risk. So when the Fed gets hawkish, everybody thinks, uh-oh, Inflation, I mean, recession might be coming. I'm going to buy bonds because that's a safe place to be in case of recession. So now we're starting to understand that as the Fed gets more hawkish, bond yields maybe go sideways and short term interest rates go up and the yield curve flattens. And as the yield curve flattens, that's your signal that the Fed might be overdoing it. Now, we're not inverted yet. But right. we're headed in that direction. Well, and we're heading there fast, right? I think that's the red flag is the speed at which we're heading there, right? Yeah, that's correct. We are, you know, the yield curve is is still 60 basis points, the difference between the 10-year and the two-year. But two months ago, it was 100 basis points. So it's uh, it's been moving quite quickly. And that's the concern, is that maybe by mid-year, it would be inverted. And that would be a signal that the Fed's gone too far, and we might be talking about recession. We're not there yet, but we're right. kind of headed in the wrong direction, and that's what's got everybody concerned. And, and I mean, listen, I mean, I looked at the GDP report, uh, the, the durable goods report, pending homes report. It just feels like we're running out of steam. Now, when you talk about the Fed going too far, is this specifically, though, that the Jay Powell Fed or the Fed in general? It feels like because of the transitory, that he was wedded to the term transitory for so long, he lost a lot of credibility. Yeah, he did. And uh, because, the, you know, that has been called one of the worst forecasting errors in Fed history. And let's add into it President Biden's press conference last week. He acknowledged inflation's a problem. And then he said, this is what I'm going to do for it. And then the next sentence was, the Federal Reserve is going to fix it. Right. So he basically, President announced to the entire country, Jay Powell is going to fix inflation. He's really got no choice on this matter anymore. He's got to address the inflation issue, even if he secretly thinks it's transitory. Yeah, speak of Faustian deals. Huh? He wanted the gig, and he got it. Hey, I got less than a minute to go. We have 70 new record highs on the S&P. Everyone kept saying, Tina, Tina, Tina. So if not Tina, where do we invest? Everyone becomes a bond investor now? No, I, I think that, you know, inflation is the story for this year. So anything that benefits from inflation, industrials, uh, cyclicals, uh, basic materials, those kind of things, even commodities themselves, there are some commodity funds, those have been performing very well. And I think that until we get this inflation story resolved, they're going to continue to do well. Commodities have been on fire. Hey, Jim, you're always on fire, and I, I always appreciate you. You're one of my favorite guests. You, 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 your information is fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, folks, remember.